second one. All right, G Town vlog number three. Here we go. Let's, um, do, this. let's do it. We're going to break it down quick. Three tiers. Tier number three, Gentry. Paul, what do you want to say to those guys at this point in the season? Uh, don't get named. They, they both have had the honors, huh? Somebody's going to repeat. Yeah. Unless, I mean, there's going to be four teams in that bottom group. Right now it looks like they're a clear bottom two. They've separated themselves from the pack. Uh, so you're going to have to finish strong and drop that name on one of the other two that end up in the, the consolation bracket. Yeah, I agree. Pretty much at this point, you're playing to just kind of mess with somebody's season. Like, like if you're if you're cleats or bloody ball Zach or whatever, <laughs> I think at this point you're probably gunning for a guy like me. I've been Paul's ne- nemesis from you know for a decade. <laughs> if, he, if he can take me out of the playoffs, this season is saved. I think it's a little late for that. Yeah. Are you guys? You're, uh, I think we have a matchup of the. It's a toilet bowl this week, isn't it? Yeah. So Gentry versus Paul. Paul what do you got? And the projectors are exactly fifteen fifty-seven for both of them, which is so incredible. And that's actually not bad for projectors. That's respectable. So yeah. good work on that, boys. Yep. Good work. Guys. Um, I'd have to look at matchups. I'm not sure. I'm just going to flip a coin right now, and we're going uh, Gentry for the win. Yep, I'm saying Gentry for the win, and I think the bottom line is going to be Andrew Luck is going to have one of his crazy Andrew Luck days. Okay, who's he matched up against? Andrew Luck is playing Tennessee, which I think that's going to be a nice little shootout. A little division matchup, yeah, okay. Sweet. So, next tier, we got – it depends on how you slice it, somewhere between three to five teams, depending on how you want to break these tiers up. But for sure in the next tier, we've got two dangerous Moffats. Big Daddy is surging. Big Daddy's had three good weeks in a row. Yeah. He he's in the playoff picture again. He is in the playoff picture. You've definitely got Coog. You've got uh, the Woodcocks, and you've got Verge in that next tier. And awesome. you're, you're borderline one, two in my book. Uh, I'm I'm going I'm going in that tier for me just because I've been fading. I'm 0 six my last three weeks, bro. Yeah, that's true. I've had I've had some injuries and then I finally got healthy and then I had everybody on a bye this week. So I'm gonna make some excuses for myself. But I I think I got a I got a lot to prove. Um, so I'd go in there with the Moffats and Wood, and you you put Virgin in there. Well, that was a mistake. Virgin should not be in there. His record is lower than yours. Yes. Um, but, He's actually in danger if he doesn't finish strong of missing the playoffs, which would be crazy. Yeah. I think on paper with Russ playing the way he is and now getting through the buys of David Johnson and Antonio Brown, Verge is going to rejoin the elite. Yeah, I agree. So then, who's, who's the most in danger of missing the playoffs out of that group? Ooh, this would take a little research. Um, I'll do some on-the-spot research because it's going to come down to, to matchup. So we got – Wood has to play you this week. Yep. Next week, Wood has Verge. Verge. And then the week after that, Wood has Coop. Coop. That's not an easy schedule right there. No. Verge gets cleats at the end of the season. That's nice. <laughs> Sorry, Polly. <laughs> so I, I still think – so who, who's Coog matched up against each week? That Woodcox versus Coog in week – 13 could be pretty huge, actually. I think yeah, not, there's something about Woodcocks versus Coog, both as a, a title and as a reality I just love. So <laughs> Coog's is taking on Healer this week, and then he's yeah. following that up with the Schwabi and then, and then the Woodcocks. So he's, he's playing one, two, and then n- number five. So Coog's, I think, is in danger of playoffs. I'm saying it right now. Yeah, but I think so, too. So, Verge actually is better than me in record now. Okay. Schwab, Healer, you and Verge are tied. Then I'm a game back. Wood's a game back of me. And then Coog and Big Daddy are one game back of Wood. So, that's where from me – I mean, you can even start at you. There's a, only a three-game gap between number three and number eight. That's pretty intense. I'm going to say right now – Wood and Coog are missing the playoffs. Big Daddy's yeah, going to do something. Well, <laughs> Big Daddy is going to pull something unbelievable. 
A-Rod to Jordy is going to be – just going to blow up. I love – Big Daddy has me. Big Daddy has Healer and B. Big Daddy has Gentry. Yep. That's the last three weeks. Okay. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying Cougs and Woodcox are going to fade. Big Daddy's gonna go top six, and he's gonna shock the world, baby. I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm going. The Moffats are out. I think your Big Daddy pick might be Ezekiel Elliott. Doesn't make the top ten at running back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I I get that. I get that. Coog wins week thirteen over, or uh, Wood beats Coog week thirteen, and I think he he gets in. That's well, I, I, see, I think the opposite. I think. Coog beats Wood Woodcox, or do I have Coog out? You have Coog out also, so but that might knock Wood out and get, open the door for Big Daddy. Okay, I'm. I think one of the Moffats besides me is making the playoffs. Okay, and I, it's I'm gonna not. Be spicy. It's gonna be. It's gonna be awesome. The last few weeks. Okay, then we'll say the upper echelon is uh, for sure Healer, no doubt he's about. There on record, he's, he's only like sixth in points or something. What is he in points? Not great. A little lower than you'd expect because his record's really strong. Yeah, healer in points is 16,281. Okay. So he's fifth, just barely ahead of Wood. Yeah, so, okay, the elite, we're going to say for the sake of the uh, just clean tiers, is the Schwab, the Rehab Boys, and Healer. How do you, okay. how do you, how do you see that playing out? Just in that order. Rehab Boys are kind of on fire. Um, you're playing some good ball. Schwab's been super consistent. The consistency is. He's a. Uh, the Melvin Gordon has been going off. I still uh, wonder about Lamar Miller a little bit. Yeah. Um, quarterback is kind of. It depends on the week a little bit with Big Ben sometimes. But there's a lot of depth there. Just a ton of depth. Yeah. I mean, he's he's losing Freeman, Julio, and Gordon this week. And he's still got, like, LeGarrette Blunt, Lamar Miller, Devontae Adams. There's a lot of – he doesn't have anybody bad on the whole roster. Yeah. He's a magician with the roster. I think Schwab's the team to beat right now. Yep. Yes. I agree. Sorry, I opened, I opened too many tabs. We were getting slow for a second. That was my fault. Um, yeah, I agree. I think you're a huge threat. I think a healthy Verge is a big threat that the Alshon Jeffrey for Hopkins trade looked bad for him. And then Alshon goes and gets the four game suspension. So it not looks bad for both of them. I still might rather take Coog. <laughs> yeah. This has been brutal. Yep. All right. So we're both picking the Schwab going into week 11 Schwab. You're the guy to beat. We all see it. We all agree. All right. Um, let's just do a little bit of uh, thinking about the trade deadline coming up tomorrow at, 9 a.m. That's right, 9 a.m., guys. So after you watch this vlog, look at that roster one more time. Make sure you don't want to make a move. Um, any possible r roster weaknesses that you see that any guys are going to try and try and screw somebody tonight on? <laughs> I mean, I think we got to look and see what Coog will do if he's going to try to replace Alshon. I don't know if you want to rely on Jordan Matthews, that receiver, for your stretch run. Um, I mean, Schwab's got a lot of depth, so somebody could try a two-for-one and get a shore up their depth, give Schwab something decent for two of his bench guys. Yep. Um, I don't know. What do you see? Well, I'll just let the cat out of the bag. I offered my brother Todd Gurley straight up for Jay Ajaye this last week and got denied. So I've been shopping Gurley. <laughs> like, <laughs> but – I think things are about to change because Jared Goff is taking over this. <laughs> That's going to do the trick, man. Yeah. So I, I, did, I think guys are settled in for the most part. I don't think any blockbusters are going down tonight. I don't, yeah. know, I don't see anything huge. I could, see, I could see some WR2s, some RB2s maybe getting shifted. Got, maybe got like a Robert Kelly, maybe, maybe a CJ Procise, you know, buy high. Todd Gurley for pro size. If I offered that to you tonight, what would you do? I'm, oh, ooh, I'm probably taking it. That's a little spooky. Uh, not, not knowing what Rawls is going to do to that situation. 
Process could literally be a third down back this week. We have a guest on vlog number three. Hey, yeah, this is my daughter, Ashlyn. <laughs> what do you think of CJ Process, Ashlyn? <laughs> she says, she says uh, dad's an idiot for drafting Gurley. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I, as a Todd Gurley owner, I've come up with all sorts of crazy possible trades. And I actually thought about sending Gurley for Prozice tonight. I thought about sending Gurley for a Carlos Hyde. I thought about yeah. There, there's there's guys that I just I've thought about doing it. Haven't done it yet. I think I'm committed. This is my this is my team. I'm going to war with them. Okay. I mean Gurley, yeah. I mean there's still it's it's crazy how much thing can can change down the stretch. Three four weeks here. What three weeks regular season and three weeks playoffs? Six yep. weeks is a long time. Six weeks is a long time, baby. That could be a lot more two yard runs, or maybe Gurley finally rips a few off and becomes a stud again. Who knows? Yep. All right. Last thing we're going to talk about is the uh, Seattle backfield. As a guy who's owned all three running backs yesterday, <laughs> until an hour ago, <laughs> how are you feeling about the situation? Um, I have no idea. Honestly, I, I mean, obviously, I'm wishing I had Tom Brady instead of Kristen Michael, who I just dropped. I actually went to make a – I'm a little sick of ESPN because I went to make a two-for-one trade to open up a roster spot to activate Rawls, and they wouldn't let me make the trade until I dropped somebody first because uh, I had him on IR, and I thought that was weak. So I still threw the trade out there, um, but I ended up dropping Michael, which at first I was going to keep – Michael, and just see where he landed because I could see if it's a decent situation, maybe he still has some value, but chances are he's going to be a backup somewhere and it's not a pretty situation. So Rawls, I, I just know how much Pete loves Rawls and the way he runs, and I don't think Procise is an every down kind of back. I don't think he has the strength to, to battle like that down after down. They're going to use him as a weapon, slide him outside, um, passing situations. He'll be the guy that they – kind of their little toy. So I think Rawls is going to be probably a 60-40 kind of guy. I don't know if that'll be this week or not. Uh, but I think by the week after, if he stays healthy, that's what we're looking at. Hopefully he doesn't screw both their fantasy value. I've got the Seattle backfield screwed me all season long. So yeah. <laughs> that's um, what I'm doing. I think Christine Michael ends up – and for some reason I'm thinking Green Bay. That would be interesting, actually. Yeah, I think – I might pay to get him back. I think he's a pretty good player, and I feel bad for the guy because he's battled hard. He's the number 19 fantasy back when he was released today. I know. You know what? I wish that ESPN would do a better job of that too because if a guy is injured and misses a game, it hurts their average, and they don't include yep. like overall for their rankings. Like he's top 20, but he's already had his bye, and some guys haven't. It would be nice if they, if they didn't make us do all the work to see how much the guy is averaging every week. Yeah, Le'Veon Bell is like the number eight running back. It's like, no, he's not. Right. Number two when he plays all the games. Like, even if I look at my squad, like uh, Tyrell Williams is the number 11 wide receiver, but he's averaging less per game than, like, Marvin Jones, who's the number 20 receiver, just because of buy stuff. So, it just – it's a little not trustworthy. But at the same time, I just know Pete loves – um guys that are Marshawn-esque and physical and set a tone for his offense. And it was two weeks ago, I think, when C. Mike ran out of bounds twice and one of them was a yard short of the first down. And they hate that. that I think that killed a little piece of Pete on the inside. And so seeing Procise that first catch last night when he lowered the shoulder and just chucked the safety on the sideline, or two nights ago, I guess, whatever. I think they even said that just fired up their whole sideline. And so seeing that contrast, I think it's – why C Mike is gone right now. <clears throat> yep. All right. He's that talented and explosive too. It's amazing that he hasn't ripped off more big runs. You would think he'd have some 80 yarders in him. He just seems like, boom, he's just a flash of lightning. And then, I don't know, he, he, does, he doesn't seem to have the ability to miss at the second level. Yeah, that's true. He's good getting those 10 to 15 yard runs. Doesn't have a lot of 50 plus. Yeah. All right. Um, that's it. That's all we got for you. So check out the blog give us your feedback let us know if you want to bring a question put it up on the message board we'll interact with all your questions every week here i like that by idea every, by every week i mean every other week if we feel like it <laughs> and uh 
G Town, we love you guys. Hey, before we leave, let's do a real quick power rankings right now so I don't have to type them up. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, for sure. Number 10. Number 10. Number 10. Frederick. Yep. Nine. Gentry. Agreed. Number eight. Ooh, this is where it gets spooky and real, real quick. I'm going to say Big Daddy, but barely. Okay, I'm disagreeing. I'm going Coog 8. Okay. Big Daddy's on fire. I'm going to still keep Big Daddy at 7, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to put Coog, or I'm going to put, I'm going to put Stizox at uh, 7. Okay. This to punish you for being 0 and 6. <laughs> That's fine. I. That's not bad, although I will say I've, I've had a pretty solid week. A lot of weeks, 1640 would have got me a win or maybe two. Yeah. Getting 0 and 2 this week with all those buys. I was like, oh, I thought I had a chance. but Number six, I'm saying Coog. Okay, I'm saying uh, I'll put the Stizhawks there. Number five. Woodcocks. Woodcox. Number Four. Th- Verge. I'm going to go Healer. Number three. Verge. Healer. Number two. Two. Rehab boys. Yes, sir. And number one, the Schwab. Schwabby. Got to knock him off the perch. All right. All right, boys. Have a great night. See ya.